Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking through the client tracker in both Google Sheets and Excel. If you have already purchased this tracker, thank you so much for your order. And if you've stumbled across this video and you are looking for a good way to track all of your clients and their activity, I will include a link to the template in the comments below. Feel free to purchase and follow along as well. Um, I'm going to be starting in Google Sheets. That's what I have open right now. If you are working in Excel, feel free to follow along in either. I will be hopping between the two platforms throughout the video as well, just to walk through a couple different features between the two. Um, so this dashboard is going to be the first thing you see when you open up the client tracker. Um, it's going to be pretty blank when you open it up, and that's okay. Um, this will all come to life as you continue to populate the other sheets at the bottom, so we'll be coming back here. So the first place that you are going to want to start is your client list. Um, this is going to be a place for you to track all of your clients, um, contact information, industry they operate in, their lead source, their status, the service you provided them. Um, tasks completed, last contacted, and total revenue, those are all going to populate based on some of the other tabs. And then you're able to rate your client as well. So just for the sake of example, I am going to paste in a bunch of information um, just so all of this can start to come to life. So say I, I have all of these clients and this is their contact information. I have a couple different industries in here just for the sake of example, job titles, um, cities, states, all, all of that as well. And then over here, I put in a number of different lead sources. So you'll see there's a number of different options that you can choose from right here. Um, in addition to your client status, there's different options. Services, you're just going to go ahead and type in the service. And then this will calculate as we populate some tasks. Same with this column. And then your total revenue is going to calculate as well. Um, the last couple columns over here is going to be your client rating. So this is going to be actually you rating your client versus the other way around. Um, what's really important uh, to use this is because then if you have some uh, VIP clients that you want to give specific attention to, this is a really good way to indicate that for yourself. Um, and then you can add in notes such as... Um, birthdays, their mom's name, their pet's name, anything like that, that can really deepen your relationship as well. Um, so one thing I do want to show you how to customize before I go to another tab is the lead source column right here. So right now I have cold call all the way through social media populated in here. But if you have additional lead sources that you would like to track, you are going to click this little edit button in the bottom. And then it's going to open up this screen on the right hand side. Um, so then you are able to either adjust the colors as you see fit, you can rename any of these. You can add another item. We'll say lead source 11. And then when you are finished, um, you would go ahead and click this done button. So you click that and then this is going to populate on your screen. It'll say apply to all. And you want to click apply to all. The reason that you do that is then you come in here and you see lead source 11. But then if you click in any other cell um, in this column, you're also going to see what the change that you just made as well. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hop over to Excel to walk you through how to do the same customization in Excel because it's just a little bit different. Um, so in Excel, I'm going to navigate to the lead source column. So that's column N. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of your Excel sheet. Um, and you are going to grab from N999. I am going to grab all the way up to N4. Um, and then in order to make the changes here, what you are going to do is go to data. Um, and then you are going to go to data validation right here. And then that's going to bring up this screen for you here. So again, you can either um, make changes, like if you want it to just say call versus cold, <laughs> you can go ahead and make that change. And then if there's additional options that you would like to add, you can add a comma to the end, uh, no space before or after the comma. And then you would type in um, what you want to call it and you would click OK. And what that's going to do, let me scroll up to the top, is it's going to add in that lead source at the top for you as well, which is really nice. Um, so that's a good way to customize that in Excel. Um, I am going to hop back to the Google Sheets version um, just to continue walking through here as well. So the next place that we are going to go is the task tracker. So the task tracker is a really good place to track basically any interaction that you have with a client. A lot of people use this tracker basically as their CRM to keep track of phone calls, emails, all of that. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to put in the name of your task. So um, for this, like I put in task name one, but let's do um, call Sue about her upcoming birthday. 
client name, you're going to see that there's a drop down here. And then all of the clients that you had already populated in your client list are automatically going to show up here. And what's really cool about that is as you add more to the client list, so say um, we have a Justin Michelson in addition to Justine, that would automatically populate on here as well in real time for you, which is really nice. And then same with your companies, you can go ahead and click whatever company um, is associated to, those are all going to pull over. You're going to assign a priority to the task, and then you would say what type of a task it is. So again, we have some different options in here. Um, the status of your task, and then you can go ahead and give yourself uh, a due date. And if you've already started the task, you can put in a start and a finish date here as well. And then any notes, again, maybe something you learned uh, when you were interacting with a client that can go here as well. So just for the sake of example, I am going to um, populate just a couple more of these as well. Just to show a couple other things, I am going to walk through um, all of these for Sue specific and then same thing, I'm going to just select the same company. I'm gonna do different priorities in here as well. And then I'm gonna do different tasks types here too. Okay. Perfect, all right, let's see here. All right, so I'm gonna hop right back to this, but I do wanna show this next tab at the bottom is the task calendar view. This is your Gantt chart. So sometimes it's easier, we, you know, when you use this client task tracker, you're gonna have all of your tasks for all of your clients in here. Um, sometimes it's gonna be easier to view all of your tasks for each client in one view. So this is uh, the purpose of this sheet right here. So you're gonna see client name at the top. You would go ahead and select Sue Smith, and then automatically it pulls in um, all of your task names, your priorities, your status, start end, how many days, um, everything is going to calculate here as well for you. And you can see as you select other clients, um, there's nothing that shows because right now you only imported tasks uh, for Sue. So this is a really nice view for each of your clients as well. A um, couple things to note in the Gantt chart um, is the start and end dates. You're going to want to make sure that those are tied up here as well. So say and I'm actually gonna make just a couple changes just to walk through that as well. So say some of these start dates were in March. When you come here, it wouldn't show anything because this is pulling from January. So in order for that to show up, you would change the first date of the calendar to March 1st. You would click enter and then all of a sudden um, it advances the calendar and then those dates show up as well. You can also advance it with the weeks of the year. So if I do undo and move it back to January, I could also advance it by selecting the later week of the year and then that's going to advance the calendar as well. So as you continue to go, then you see March uh, comes in here as well. So going back to the task tracker, um, if you would like to edit the task types, um, you're going to follow the same thing that we did for the client list. So you would go ahead and click on your option, click on your edit button. And then over here, you can either, again, edit any of these or you can um, add in another option at the bottom down here. Again, you're going to click apply to all in Google Sheets, and then that's automatically going to bring in your task type as well for you, uh, which is really nice. Excel happen right back there is going to be the same thing with the data validation instead. So what you're going to do is on the task tracker, scroll all the way to the bottom again, select F999 in this case, go ahead and just drag your mouse all the way to the top and then click on data validation again. It's going to bring up this for you. So you would go in here and click in here with a comma. Again, no spaces on either side of the comma. You would type in um, your, your new type, <laughs> go ahead and click OK. And then when you scroll up to the top, you're going to see uh, that that's available for you as well, which is really nice. Um, so back to Google Sheets. So that's how to keep track of all of your tasks. What's really nice is if I hop back to the client list for Sue Smith right here, if I scroll all the way over, you're going to see that the tasks completed is now four. 
uh, for Sue Smith because it's pulling in everything from your task tracker, which is really nice. Um, the next tab I want to walk through is your invoice tracker. Um, this is a great way to make sure that you get paid. <laughs> so here you are going to add in uh, an invoice number. Again, um, your client name is already going to be in there. Same with your company name. Your services are also going to pull over from your client list. You can go ahead and click on that. You would go and enter your invoice total. You would enter the date that you sent the invoice as well as the due date. You can put in your terms. If you have net 30 or net 60, net 90, you can go ahead and put that in. And then the status of the invoice as well. So you can do processing, sent to client, paid in full, or past due. And then you can again put any notes that you would like to as well for each client. Um, and then the last one that I want to walk through is invoice template. So this is a great way to actually create an invoice um, right here in Google Sheets or Excel. And then what you can do is save this individual sheet as a PDF and then send that off uh, to your client. So you'll see in here it says invoice for. You can select Sue and then you can select her company name. Um, you would go ahead and type in the address information. Um, the reason that this does not pull over from the client list is sometimes you don't invoice the location that you have on file for the client list. And I wanted to give people the opportunity to customize that in case you're sending an invoice to headquarters as opposed to where your client works. Um, payable too. So you would enter your first and last name here. You would also add in your company information and your logo at the top. Um, you can put in the date that you submitted this, the invoice number, again, um, that you would like to track that with, and you can make sure that that coordinates with your invoice tracker, uh, the date that the invoice is due, and then any details about the service or the project that you provided to that client. And then down here, this is a way for you to itemize um, anything that you covered on this invoice. You can add in quantities. And then as you go ahead and change that, you'll see that your total price is automatically calculated um, as well as your total at the bottom. And then say you wanna give a client a discount, you can go ahead and edit this and it'll automatically calculate um, that for you as well. So um, that is going to be how to use the invoice template. So going back to the client list over here, with Sue, you see that it automatically pulls in $10,000 as well um, from that invoice tracker. And if you have multiple invoices for Sue, it's going to pull in all of your invoices for Sue as well and give you a grand total of the revenue associated with that client. Um, so last but not least, I want to end with the dashboard. So now you will see that this has all come to life. Um, what's really neat is it's going to tell you how many prospects, how many leads you have versus current clients. It's going to tell you your potential revenue that's associated with those leads versus the total revenue that you are currently making from your current clients. Um, any clients that you gave a five-star rating to are going to show right here just so they stay top of mind for you. Um, this uh, chart right here is going to be your potential and current revenue uh, by lead source. So it's going to show you, wow, in this case, paid advertising as a lead source or print advertising as a lead source has generated $45,000 of current and potential revenue. I wonder if we focus more of our efforts here going forward. Um, it's going to bring in your lead sources over here to show you again that breakdown not associated to revenue. That's why these two are really helpful together. And then as you continue to scroll through the dashboard, um, on the left-hand side, it's gonna be a task overview. And then on the right hand side, it's going to be an invoice overview. Um, so here it'll show any clients with past due tasks. So in this case, since I marked this task as past due, it's going to show up right here for you. This is usually going to be your highest priority of what you want to start your week with. Um, it's going to break down your tasks by their priority level, which is really nice. Um, and then it'll show you your, your task types, whether it's um, call, mail, meeting, or your customized options. And then it'll also give you um, your task status, if not started, in progress, past due, or completed. Um, on the invoice side, let me actually change one of these invoices to past due. So then this also activates. So any clients that have not paid their invoice um, are going to show up on this list. That's a really good way for, again, you to make sure that you get paid. <laughs> It'll also calculate how many invoices are processing versus you sent them out versus they're paid in full versus past due. And then if uh, a dollar amount is helpful for those statuses as well. That's going to calculate at the bottom for you too. So that is an overview of the client tracker. Again, thank you so much uh, for your order and for following along, and I will see you in the next video.